When dealing with layers in the Affinity apps, it is beneficial to understand the distinction between clipping and masking. I'll show you the difference on this example here. First, I'll enable snapping up here. Then I'll long click on the rectangle tool and select the ellipse tool. I can hover over the first image here until I am aligned directly on its center point. Then I can click drag to create the ellipse. Whilst doing so, I can hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows to draw it out from its center to the edges of the image. Now let's say we wanted to mask the image beneath with this ellipse shape. To achieve this, we would click drag the ellipse on the layers panel and offer it to the thumbnail of the layer we want to mask. Then release the mouse button. Dropping a layer onto the thumbnail of another layer is a masking behavior. If I expand this layer, the ellipse is now acting as a mask. We can see this because it has a small mask icon at the bottom right of the thumbnail. If I drag this ellipse out to the parent layer stack and release the mouse button, it no longer acts as a mask. Now, if I drag it onto the label or the text of the target layer, notice the overlay is different. It highlights the whole width of the layer. If I now release the mouse button, the ellipse is clipped inside of the image layer. We can also refer to this behavior as child layering. The ellipse is now a child layer of the parent image layer. This means the ellipse is now constrained to the bounds of the image layer. For example, if I select the Move tool and start moving the ellipse around, it cannot render outside of the image bounds. This is clearer to see if I make the ellipse black instead of white. To bring the ellipse back out, rather than click dragging, I can right click it and choose Release. If I then drop this ellipse into the second image layer as a mask, I can demonstrate that the ellipse can be transformed at any time. So we can easily use all manner of shapes as non destructive masks. When it comes to adjustment and live filter layers, the clipping and masking options take on slightly different behaviors. For example, I have this group called Cutouts, which contains several placed image layers and a pixel layer containing painted shadow detail. I could add a brightness contrast adjustment, then click drag and offer it to the Cutouts group text, which would clip it into the group. Any changes I make to the adjustment will only affect the contents of the group. This is fine, but as a general child layer, the adjustment is subject to Z order of the layer stack. So for example, if one of these cutout layers happened to be above the adjustment, that cutout would no longer be affected by it. If you want an adjustment or live filter layer to affect the whole structure of the group and not be subject to Z order placement, you can click drag and offer it to the group thumbnail. Instead, rather than act as an explicit mask, this adjustment will instead always render above the general child layers in the group. Notice there is a thin row that delineates mask layers from clipped or child layers. The background gray is also darker for mask layers compared to child layers. You will find that the default behavior for live filters is for them to be added as mask layers. For example, if I select the Cutouts group, then go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Blur, Diffuse Glow, it is added above the Brightness Contrast adjustment as a mask layer. This means that regardless of the Cutout Layer Z order, it will always render on all content in the group. I could click drag and reposition it within the main Child Layer stack to illustrate that you can easily move layers between these two different sections. To move it back to the mask layer section, I could either click drag it over the group thumbnail, or I could drag it just underneath this brightness contrast adjustment. Notice there is a small difference between the mask layer drop target, which has a graduated highlight, and the regular clipping or child layer drop target, which is a solid line. I'll make sure the graduated line is being displayed then release the mouse button so it becomes a mask layer again. And that was a quick look at how clipping and masking layers work in Affinity Photo.
Bear in mind that you can apply this methodology to Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher as well, since the Layers Panel functionality is consistent between all three applications. Thank you for watching.